Hi guys, I'm Ryan Newsman and welcome to my flight hunting channel. If you haven't already done so, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Uh, that'll keep you up to date with everything as I upload it. Uh, my channel already contains hundreds of videos covering a wide range of both patterns and techniques from the basic to the more advanced. Uh, so without delay, let's get on with the show. Uh, so tonight we're going to tie a, a fly called a Copper John. This is a nymph. Uh, I guess it's probably a generally representative nymph. Uh, and it's probably more famous uh, in North America than it is over here, but uh, being a general nymph shape, it could work anywhere in the world. So generally tied on uh, a 2x long hook. Uh, and what you do is take a gold bead that suits the size of your hook. So that's up to yourself. Choose, choose the size of fly you're doing and then choose something that's in proportion to it. Put the hook through the small hole first so that the large hole or recess is towards the back of the fly and we will put that into our vise. Secure it in place. So we want uh, we want to secure our bead up here. So if you take something like a 0.015 wire, uh, so there are lead and lead free wire options available. Take that, put it onto your hook and wind it. Now I'm holding the back of the wire here. And then when I get further forward, you'll see it starts to snap of its own accord, but get it wrapped on nice and tight and then snap it off and snap it off there as well. And what you want to do then is to slide that back up into the large hole of our uh, our bead, and that uh, that'll help to stop that sliding back. And we'll then further secure that with uh, our tie-in thread and uh, with some adhesive. So for this, uh, we're going to use a super glue. So what I do is to take. Super glue on a brush, and I sort of just brush just behind it up to the junction of it, and a little bit over the uh, these wire wraps. Take your tying thread on, and it'll stick into the glue then that we have on the shank, and that'll create a dam that again stops that coming back. So it'll create like a little bit of a taper building back up into the step because uh, we want to remove that step portion of our fly and then wrap across our, our wire. Now what you'll find there is that because it's wrapping in the same direction as the thread that you're wrapping what you will have to do is to take greater bites than you want to so it'll run across several wraps. Once you do that and go back on itself you will then get a nice even uh, platform to tie the fly on. So, uh, these flies tend to have bites as a uh, tail, so a pair of bites. Uh, I think the original uh, was invented sometime in the 90s. Okay, I think his name was John Barr. Uh, and so you can use a brown goose bite if that's what you want to use. Uh, alter the color to suit yourself. Uh, and I, it's not only geese that produce buy it so this is a peacock primary and you could take two buy it's off that as well if you wanted and by using natural uh, type feathers so this uh, you get a more natural look as opposed to the to the fly rather than a fully dyed version so if we take our two buy it's here that we stripped off there and what we want to do is separate them out, turn them around because they have a curvature to them. So if we turn them back to back, we'll then get this separation when we tie in the tail. So 
tail length is a personal preference but generally about half of the uh, length of the fly or the body there would do so we set that on and then just position a bayet on each side you hold it really tightly put on a loose wrap and as you start to wrap you see it'll want to sort of flip itself over a little bit so you want to just rotate that back again hold it in place and then tie back to uh, wherever you intend the body to, to end it so, so usually somewhere around about the barb of the hook would do and there is a consideration then to where you cut off these tag ends so we're trying to create a sort of seamless taper from where this step ha happened here with our with our weighted wire so we'll tie up to the back of that and then i'm just going to flip them back on themselves a couple of wraps over and then i'll just get my scissors in behind those snip them off and as we wrap back then that should continue our taper and we'll just sort of go back and forward until I'm kind of happy with the uh, with the general shape of it so as you can see if we look from the top that we have this sort of branching out uh, by it tail okay so next these flies have a wire body uh, so again the diameter of the wire is up to yourself so we could use you know wires are generally available in point i think the, from about point 0.1 of a millimeter point 0.2 point 0.3 point 0.4 the thicker you get obviously you'll get a different look to the segmentation of the body but they also become harder to work with i find the thicker they get uh, so this is a point 0.2 millimeter so if i wrap that we'd get you know we'd have a lot of turns and a lot of segmentation uh, to deal with in that body so I'm going to go with a slightly thicker wire here so this one is probably uh, I think this is a 0 0.4 0 0.3 of a mil uh, and here if there is still any stagger then that's where we're going to tie it up because we're going to have a thorax on this fly as well so uh, that would create us like a junction point where we could uh, set our tying to So we'll tie our thread back uh, to this point where our tail is going to be. So thread color, I'm using black here. And what you will find then is that uh, if there are any uh, gaps between the wire as you wrap it, then the black will show through and that will give you an added segmentation uh, effect, I suppose. Uh, you could go for a color of tie and thread that suited the, uh, the wire that you're using. Uh, or something totally contrasting to it. So, that being in place, what I am going to do is to take a clear thin varnish and a dubbing needle and I'm just going to varnish this underbody. And I think that'll give the fly extra durability. Uh, less chance to rust as well if uh, if water sort of gets underneath our dressing so we now take our wire and just be careful with the first turn we're trying to not leave any of the uh, thread exposed if we can and we just wrap that forward hopefully in touch and turns and because we've created a taper with our underbody then as we wrap this as it's uniform in thickness it will conform to the shape of the underbody that we've created and we should get then a little bit of a taper into this fly as we wrap it forward So we're now forward to the point where we're going to tie in a thorax. Um, so 
wire. There are a variety of ways of tying off or cutting wire. So you can use scissors, it tends to wreck your scissors. Uh, you can tie it in. Notice now I tied across it and then I kicked it once it was sort of held. I pulled it by uh, into a 90 degree angle and I'm going to tie forward on that a little bit and then holding my thread under tension to give me a, a bite point I'm just going to go back and forward now you can also spin it around like a whirly gig and it will also break uh, and that gives us a nice neat and secure tie in to that uh, wire section so some people then tend to uh, or choose to varnish or epoxy or uh, or use a UV resin on the body at this point and that'll give you a really nice shiny shiny coat but I'm going to leave it uh, raw here and uh, as I said copper will tarnish in time and that'll give you a nice natural look to it as well if that is what what suits your your fancy. So we have to then next take into consideration what is going to be the uh, thorax cover uh, and on these what I'm going to do is I'm going to take like a, a wide pearl here and I'm going to hold it slightly over on my side and then wrap and that will take it up directly onto the top of the hook and we'll leave that hanging backwards uh, next you want to contrast into a dark uh, thorax underneath that and slightly wider um, so variety of different things I suppose you could use uh, Swiss straw or you could use some sort of a nymph wrap what I'm going to use here is a Czech nymph uh, strip in like this dark real dark sort of tobacco sort of color and I'm going to just trim it down to about half of its thickness there which will leave it maybe three and a half four mil wide and I'm going to tie that in on top of our pearl tinsel strip I'm holding it back when you have these sort of flexible type materials um, they can take they can make quite a bit of bulk underneath your tines there but if you hold them and stretch them and then wrap over it uh, it's a whole lot neater to my mind so next uh, we're going to do the actual thorax itself and for that what I'm going to use is a peacock hurl so you can take a hurl and just wrap it in uh, like you would do with the haggle so tie it in by the tips tie it in by the base up to yourself and wrap it uh, and if you look at a hurl there are there's like a it's like a haggle it's like a mini haggle so there is a, a bad and a good side to it uh, and you would try and wrap i suppose with the shiny side pointing forward uh, now what i'm going to do actually here is to wrap two at a time but i'm going to uh, twist it onto my tenth thread. So I'll get the two uh, strands of peacock curl on there. And I'm just going to trim off the waist ends of it and I'm going to run a little bit of tie in wax on my tie in thread. Then I'll stretch this out and I'll take the two strands of peacock curl out here. Uh, and what I'm actually looking for is these ripped off ends of them so they will give you a little bit more so you need to take your uh, your thread right out beyond those by twisting those those will give you a little something to hold on to so it's hard to show you here because of depth of field but I'm twisting and then I grab with this uh, non-dominant hand and twist again and that will give me a nice tight dubbed rope of peacock hurl and the fact that when you, when you wrap that on then the fact that it has the actual tie and thread core to it uh, with the peacock wrapped all around it 
uh, I think it makes for a stronger construct because each wrap of thread is wrapping over the twisted stocks or stems or whatever you want to call them of the uh, of the peacock curl and therefore tying them down so even if they get ripped a little bit with teeth they shouldn't just totally unravel whereas if you had just wrapped peacock raw with no thread then that's a possibility that that could happen so we take that up behind the the bead and then I'm going to let it unravel uh, for the tie in or tie off of itself so I'll hold the two fibers then and take my tie in thread over the top across it and I always like to double things back a lot when I'm tying so I'll take a couple of turns that I know are behind it then I'll flip it back and a couple of turns over the front of it and trim that off so you can see we're sort of gaining our nymph shape uh, and the next thing we need to do then is to get some sort of legs or feelers into it so we're going to use uh, like a hand typed hackle uh, I suppose the original is some sort of like a brownie type uh, hackle to it so what we're going to use here is uh, I think this is a barn builder so if I take that and nip out the tip then separate out a portion which I'm happy enough to create my legs with and strip the rest of it off I'm going to set that on top and I'm going to hold it in place with my finger and thumb and tie across the stock and then I will slide my uh, hackle forward until I get them reduced in length to the point where I want and tighten up my wraps. So if you want to make it extra secure flip that back and I turn across it. Nick that off. And then we're going to take our two thorax covers across that. So I might flip that up towards yourself when I'm doing it. Uh, so what I'd do is I'd take this uh, the dark nymph skin type stuff and I'd flip it over. You can see. Just make sure we're not trapping any of our little legs as such. Take a turn across that and another and then I'm going to take the pearl across the top of that and tie it in place as well. So we have a decent sized tie in here. Um, don't be overly worried about that because it's going to have an epoxy portion on the top uh, and that will hide some of our tying flaws. So I'll just turn my tinsel back and have one turn across it and I'm going to turn this other uh, nymph skin stuff back. I'm going to pull it back with a little bit of tension and trim that and that will give us Quite a neat actually tie in for uh, for a thorax cover and after that as I said the tying now is complete so what we'll do is uh, half hitch or whip finish whichever you do I use my hands you use a whip finish tool whatever suits behind the bead there and then get our scissors tight up in and make that off so that is the uh, general tying of the fly done all that remains now is to get the epoxy portion on the uh, on the back here. So uh, you can use whatever you want for this. You know, you can use uh, UV type resins, but I'm not a, I'm not a massive fan of UV resins. So what we're going to use here is a uh, five minute epoxy, a two part five minute epoxy. So I've placed a little bit of the resin and the accelerator on uh, one of these little post-it pads and you can buy a block of those very cheaply and also a packet of cocktail sticks and what we do is we take the cocktail stick and mix our two parts together and we'll end up with uh, a mixed resin on this here so 
what you'll find with these resins here is that you can actually mix glitter and different things into it and uh, create a, a variety of different effects. So what we're going to do is take a cocktail stick, take a little blob of that. Now generally what I'd do here is uh, I would probably, instead of wasting that bit that we've made there, I would probably take and make uh, you know several nymphs uh, in the one go. Uh, and then if we just run a little run of that across the back of the fly get the extra or excess epoxy off we want that up on the uh, on the bead to a certain degree and also running back into the the body and as you can see there is a little bit of It's a little bit thickish this uh, this epoxy so it allows you to to work with it let it to drag it and then it will also then settle under its own weight so it will actually sort of conform around the uh, the thorax of the fly now if you want you can spread it out a little bit to, to aid it doing that but then it will sort of self level under its own weight So that is our Copper John uh, tied. Now I know it's a little bit of explaining going on there, so it's probably a little bit uh, slower than general, but uh, hopefully that is of some use to some people uh, and helps you uh, tie a neater uh, type fly. So uh, if you like what you've seen here tonight, uh, give us a like, subscribe, and tell all your friends. Uh, and. Uh, check out the other videos that I've done like there's over 400 different patterns and videos suiting all sorts of different tastes of type of fly tying on my channel uh, and as I said until next time tight lines and thanks for watching